My name is John Atkinson, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Sterophile magazine and I'm sitting here with Herb Reichert, Sterophile's self-styled cub reporter and <laughs> Philadelphia area retailer Doug White of The Voice That Is and we've been spending the afternoon listening to the new Tidal Akira loudspeakers, a mere $215,000 a pair. So Doug, yes. what is special about the speakers we've been listening to? Well, the biggest special, I would say, component is the 5-inch diamond midwoofer. Uh, it is pure diamond. It's not a diamond coated or fake or you, what you would call just made up term. It is real diamond. Uh, you're talking about 13 carats of diamond. 13 carats? Per speaker. <laughs> yes. That would make one heck of a ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. As you say, diamonds are a girl's best friend, but these are boys' best friends. And the best ladies friend. like it as well. Um, that particular speaker plays from 100 hertz up to about 16,000 where uh, the crossover brings in the... 16 or 6,000? 6,000, 6,000. 6,000. Uh, up where the, uh, the tweeter uh, crosses over. So uh, this is the next to the flagship. It's one below the flagship in the Diamond series, uh, just below the La Saluda uh, speaker. So uh, the speaker has been out, or introduced maybe a year, year and a half ago. And this is the first time in the United States that it has been uh, available for uh, private review. We do have a couple of pairs in, in owners' hands in the country, but um, it's a pleasure to have you guys have a, the first opportunity to listen. It's been our pleasure listening to some Thank favorite you. tracks this afternoon. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. I just actually, all the way through, that particular driver, just I kept going, I've heard these speakers before, but today I really heard that driver. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Thank you. Really Thank you. Truly Thank you. Well. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a sort of seamlessness about the mid-range and lower treble, which, particularly on choral recordings, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed. Well, you just played a particular track of your own recording. Yes. What, yeah. what, was, what was your take on that? Because I know that um, you, you know what it was when you recorded it. So how did it portray the, the, your work, your recording? Well, it, it was a recording by the Portland State Chamber Choir of Eric Whitaker's early work, Water Night, mm -hmm. and it, the music is built up of tonal clusters which then hold over and I felt what I was really enjoying about the sound of the tidal Akira speakers was the way the individual voices within the choir were kept separate from one another. Mm -hmm. you, you could hear, not you couldn't hear the individual speakers, the individual singers obviously, right. but you could hear the individual musical strands and how they built up to a whole without the sound clogging up, right. without the sort of sort of intermodi treble you get if you were playing at a high level on, on some ordinary speakers. Mm -hmm. So I mean that really impressed me. Um, yeah, Herb, you, you had some reactions. Well, right from the start, you started, you began with LPs. Yes. Second LP was a choral LP. Right from the start, this whole choral issue just kept running as a thread. The way it would sort out the bits mm -hmm. of orchestra, the, the choir, etc. Yeah. was really extraordinary. And, it's, and it stayed in its own space. Yeah. Exactly. That. Yeah. You, I noticed that on, one, on your recording, the last piece that you played, there was a bit of bass that appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared. Yeah, so when the, the, the bass singers sit, hit, hit a low pedal note. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I think that that's the hallmark of the entire line. You can get that signature from the smaller speaker at $23,000 all the way up to their half a million dollar um, La Saluda flagship speaker, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically two of those, mid, two of those midwoofer drivers yeah. Um, opposite the tweeter. Now, now the, the midwoofer that was developed by Tidal in conjunction with Accuton. Yes, it is an exclusive Tidal only product. And Accuton also make the B one inch diamond diamond that's, tweeter. That is true, and that, well, actually that's the largest diamond tweeter they make. It's one point two inches. One point two inches. Yes. So how many carats is that? Oh, it's one carat in that diamond. Oh, <laughs> make, make a nice area. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are stereo, so. Yeah. So Tidal, that's a German company based yes. in Cologne. Based in Cologne. How did you get involved with this? Distributing them in the United States. Well, actually, I'm I'm not the distributor. They self-distribute. Oh, okay. So I, I am I am a dealer. I'm their premier dealer in the United States. Um, I came across the speaker quite by chance by one of my by the distributor at the time, and was totally taken 
by the fact that they pulled this Contriba, which was the first model, um, actually the, the first generation of the Contriba previous to the G2, which people have now started to see. And they took them out of the box and plopped them in in the middle of the floor, plugged them up and said, let's go get something to eat. And these things were nowhere near being set up. And they were imaging like crazy. They had only been just built a couple of weeks ago and shipped from, from Germany to, to Las Vegas to the CS show. And I just was dumbfounded the whole time I'm listening to these speakers. And over the weekend, they just got better and better to the point that I said, I have to have these speakers. And fortunately, uh, Jorn Jezik, the, the CEO and designer of, of all the title speakers, was there and I had an opportunity to pick his brains. And we, he, he talked to me about this 1.2 inch diamond tweeter and, it's, and he's going to make this Diacera version of this speaker and I said, I want it. It's for me. I want it. I don't care about anybody else. I don't even care about being a dealer. I want it for myself. So I got the very first pair of title country with Diaceras in the world. And that began a love uh, relationship for the company and the brand. Um, a lot of people have seen me at shows. Um, I do that, obviously, building my own brand. But the fact of the matter is, is that I am so in love with Title as a brand, as a product, because they do not compromise in anything that they do, all the way down to the label in the front of the cabinet <laughs> that is inset three millimeters in the, into the cabinet. That's the kind of attention to detail that they pay when they pay into uh, designing their speakers. Uh, the lowest end uh, piano DSR speaker has the same tweeter as in in the uh, the, the Contriba, excuse me, uh, G2, as in the model above that, the Agoria, which you've heard multiple times as shows, uh, into the Sunray, and into obviously we go into the Diamond series, which is a little bit different. However, that family signature is carried throughout the entire line. It just gets better mm -hmm. and. You know what the pleasing, the most pleasing thing for me is when I well, dealing with this product, is that the customer that buys them, loves them from day one, and calls me back year after year and thank me for how they're enjoying their music mm. year after year. As a matter of fact, you don't see title speakers uh, in the used market very often, and when they do, they're gone very quickly. Um, my customers uh, will buy, start with a piano, and next thing you know, they're like, I want to get Contrivas. And then I take the pianos, the Contrivas go, and then they're gone. Yeah. Just like that. I suppose we should add a sidebar that Tidal loudspeakers has no connection with Tidal, the oh, streaming company. <laughs> so, yes. That's a, just an unfortunate coincidence. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'd like to interject one thing, sort of on this same thing. When, when you were showing the pictures from the mm -hmm. factory and showing how it's made, yes. besides the fact that it seems so perfect in German in every possible the way. The floors were very clean. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. For a manufacturing Unbelievable. Right. But I remember going, oh, I'm a nerd. Show me the crossover. Show me the crossover. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm listening, all I could listen for at the beginning mm -hmm. was the crossover. Good hear. I, and I, I didn't realize, you didn't tell me at the time, that it crossed over at 106,000. Mm -hmm. Because I kept listening, you know, through that range going up and down. Mm -hmm. And if I'd have known you'd said 100, I'd probably been listening there. But I, it was, I was shocked at yes. just how seamless mm -hmm. and how it played this choral music mm -hmm. especially. Well, you know, the linearity of all the title speakers, that's the way to design. So obviously, it's from the beginning to up to this range, you get that consistent, uh, seamless, linear type of sound. You know, you, there is no disjointed uh, presentation of there it is all of a sudden, and then it's you know, okay, I hear the crossover, I hear where this driver's kicking in. I think that you've had the same experience um, with some of the highs. How the, you know you listen to the percussion and the highs just start to they just float and they disappear. And going, that's the go, going to the other end of the spectrum, what's the low point in the bass? Because we were, <laughs> we were listening to a Boz Skaggs track and all of a sudden I felt my backside wiggling in the chair <laughs> on some very low notes. Where, where are they down? Well, the you know, I, I, I hate to talk specs because room plays a big deal into it and actually set up as you both know. 
Um, they measure down around in, in the high 20s. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, as you've seen in the shows, I can get just about anything out of any room. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not set up right, you're not going to get it. If you don't have the right amplification, you're not going to get it. So the fact that you were able to hear it and feel it is a byproduct of the fact that all the title speakers are you get what you get it. Yeah. So if, you're, if your electronics can't deliver, if your room can't deliver, you're not going to hear it, but we obviously could hear right. it here. So you've got three <laughs> ceramic diaphragm woofers, right? Yes, that's correct. They're what, eight inches? Yeah. And, and there's passive radiators on In the, the back. radiator speakers? Yes, that's correct. Back to that mid range. <laughs> Six octaves. Am I? Am I? I mean, yeah. Am I missing something One, here? One, two, two, three, three to six. Yes, yeah, six. It's how many mid rangers do six octaves and then don't like cough or spit when they get to the end of their full six octaves? This one didn't do that. Didn't do that. It's really, really. This is by far the best speaker that I have ever had to be able to to share with people. Yeah. I really love it. So cough and spit, uh, that's what you listen for when you're reviewing speakers? <laughs> At my price range. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have something for you. <laughs> I'm very uh, fortunate to be able to work with Title as a company. They are real people. They're, um, you know, being an engineer, okay, I know what other engineers can be like, it's, uh, my product is the best, and that's it, period. Uh, Title, they're real people. I mean, they're just regular people that hand build everything that they make. These are not cookie cutters. Obviously, in the black, it's hard to tell. Uh, you know, the, the, the finish is beautiful, but with black, the black is black is black. It's a high gloss, mid light black uh, finish. But when you get into the veneers, which all of their products are available in a veneer, they are, again, hand-picked an individual each pair even if you were to order two pair at the same time the you know you might get a close you know similarity between the two because of the simple fact that they're at the same time but if you order a Macassar Ebony in July and then next year order for your Shore House another pair same finish but there are going to be individual signatures of the tree that the veneers came from. So, so they're book matched across the they're pair? They're book matched, of course, across the pair. But they are definitely individual to the point that it's a, it's a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. uh, the company takes a picture of every veneer pair and it gets stored. Um, mm -hmm. Literally. It's, and you said the designer actually takes the picture. He's, he's, a, he's a wonderful photographer. A lot of the images that you see on the title website, as a matter of fact, I think all of the images you see, except for obviously the ones of himself, He's taken uh, the attention to detail by the uh, the staff, the uh, the the engineers, um, the guys that actually fit the drivers. I you know I've watched it. I went to the factory and worked a little bit there. It was just a, you know once I got over being in awe of all the stuff that was going on there. The attention to detail, at the smallest level, is unheard of okay in a lot of manufacturing processes and you know the real thing is, is that you know you see the title product and you can you, you see the beauty and you can hear the beauty but a lot of the beauty of title product is not seen with the naked eye and it's a shame you know I would like love to be able to share some of that and you know some of these things are available on the website but the fact of the matter that everything that makes it special you can't see, but you, you can trust your ears. You can hear it with your naked ear. With, you, with your naked ear, you can hear it. Well, you showed a picture of you and this, one of the bigger speakers, oh, bigger yeah. than we're listening to today, mm -hmm. and the designer. Yes. And I, I have this running joke in my stories about tall wizards and why are <laughs> so many designers right. tall? Right. He's really tall. He's really Another tall. Another tall wizard. He's yeah. really tall. How yeah. does this happen? Well, I think he was, uh, let's just say the air is pretty thin up there. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, maybe that's it. No, that's probably so the right it's, answer. It's, it's easier to focus when you're above the fret. Maybe. So the, the title company is 17 years old? 17 years old. And they make 
not just loudspeakers, but amplifiers, preamplifiers. Yes. And you say also a D to A converter is coming. They have a new D to A converter that, you know, listen, you're hearing it first here. That'll be coming very shortly. And as a matter of fact, because of their international, um, uh, let's say their customer base internationally, uh, they have had people say, I want a title cable. And, you know, cables, you know, there's <laughs> millions of cable products out there. But, you know, they had ideas for years of what they would do if they were manufacturing a cable. And, you know, they have a product that's coming out. And it's mm. actually pretty special. And interesting thing is, is that, you know, when we've listened to a lot of this, so the sound that you're hearing today was a lot of the cables on the system was a title product. So oh, wow. in, in keeping with their philosophy of, being real and a pure glass of water where you just, you have no filters. The uh, impression I got of the cable was that the music arrived to you at the same time. You know, uh, the frequencies for, throughout the range arrived to you at the same time. It was no humps here and no glaring there. It just kind of presented itself to you um, very easily. And I found that, you know, while I was already accustomed to what the product did, what title speakers did, mm -hmm. and the electronics did, the cable just brought even more of that out. I have to, you know, say, I have to preface the fact that a lot of people who have purchased title speakers for me already had their own cables. And the, the thing that I like, and the reason why I only carry title speakers, is the fact that every system that they go into gets better regardless of whether it's tube or electronics, tube or, or, or solid state, or whether they're using um, a silver cable or a, a, a regular copper cable or hybrid cable. Um, you know, it's, it's a wonderful product that they actually build. We're, we're getting a little dangerously close to marketing here, aren't we? Huh? No, <laughs> may I interrupt sure. ask a question? While we're famously close to marketing, may, can you describe the title aesthetic, now that they're making speakers at full range, they're making electronics, and you're suggesting now they're moving into cables. I'm guessing they have a larger worldview, and that worldview yes. could be described. The worldview for title is to build the best of whatever it is that they approach. Define best. You know, there are limitations, okay, with any design. Uh, they try to squash it, uh, no matter mm. what it is, okay. so. Getting out of the way of the music, that's their focus. Their focus across all of their products. So um, that's one of the things that I like about them. No compromise. But yet it has to be music. You know, it has to represent the music, uh, the signal, pass the signal properly. Um, I got involved with Tidal because I love music. You, you, you're a Professional drama, right? Not professional, um, well, but I played with some professionals. <laughs> <You're living. laughs> um, I played with some, so yes, um, I played music for several years. I was a, I have an electronics degree, and I was an art major. So whenever I get involved with any products, it has to sound like music first. Second, it has to be built well because I like reliability. Um, I get into how. Uh, the components that they use and, and the fact that they have to hold their values throughout the manufacturing process, just not on the label. And then the fact uh, that it looks good because, you know, I have to live with it. You know, and the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, most people have their, their uh, significant others that if you're going to put something in your, your living space, you want it to look good. Mm. And that's my criteria. Right. Um. We've been listening to these, these Acura speakers this afternoon, really been enjoying a wide variety of tracks. Um, you, Doug, for a retailer, <coughs> are somewhat unusual in that you exhibit regularly at audio shows here yes. in the United States. So when can our readers next hear the title speakers? Well, they, they can actually hear this particular pair at Expona That's in next Chicago, month in, in Chicago in April, next month. That's correct. I will be playing the Acuras for the first time in North America, actually the first time in the Americas, we're actually hearing the <laughs> wow. sneakers, yes, yes, at the at Expo. And I'm very proud to be able to, to uh, show them. The other thing I'd like to point out is that the designer will be there as well. 
you know, for, and this is the first time in about five years because of his international success, you know, he's just been everywhere else. And I said, you need to come to the United States. And here he is. He's coming this year. So, this is good. so we'll look forward to you guys letting us know what you think of the title of yes. Clearer Speakers when you hear them in Chicago next month. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. I'm Thank glad you, you're here. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> good to know you as long as I've known you. Yes. Thank you very much. Buddy, your friend of Pat. <laughs> <laughs>